starting this broadcast with a story that we have been continuously tracking on Vyond. Now, as the fighting intensifies in the war-ravaged Sudan, more foreign nationals, diplomats, now the evacuees arrive at their final destinations post the evacuation. The violence again hit the capital Khartoum. The Sudanese army bashed paramilitaries with airstrikes. Further fighting intensified in Sudan's war-ravaged province of Darfur, killing dozens of people as per new estimates. All this despite a U.S.-brokered agreement to prolong the ceasefire by 72 hours. As the truce ended between Sudan's warring generals, the evacuees from several countries mourn over how the fighting has taken several innocent lives. صرنا هون عشر سنين مثل هالوضع المؤسف ما عدى علينا طوي يعني العالم العالم راح طق صرنا أربعة أيام يعني من ناشد الأخوة يخلصونا من هالمصيبة. Following intense negotiation, the Sudanese Armed Forces SAF and Rapid Support Forces RSF agreed to implement, as you all know, a 72-hour nationwide ceasefire. Uh, ceasefire starting at midnight on April 24th, which is about two days ago. While there was an initial reduction in reports of violence, we are deeply concerned by the increase in ceasefire violations yesterday. We, we urge the SAF and the RSF to fully uphold and extend the ceasefire. And the situation on the ground is worsening. Food supplies, gas and medicines are running low in Sudan. Petrol pumps are empty and several shops are also closed. The Sudanese people are forced to flee their homes seeking a safer shelter at this moment. Many countries are using the 72-hour ceasefire as an opportunity to evacuate their people from Sudan. Dozens of Iraqis evacuated from Sudan arrived in Baghdad on Thursday. Meanwhile, India's Operation Kaveri has so far evacuated 1,250 people from the strife-torn African region.